How do I see all of my participants in Zoom? Really great question. You wanna be able to see everybody in gallery view fit into those boxes? I'm Chad and in 60 seconds, I'm gonna tell you how to do that, so super quick. And if you stick around for this video, because it's my job to help people, organizations, and universities make connection and engagement easy, I'm also gonna share two virtual meeting best practices to help your participants feel seen. Because even if you can see all of them, I would argue that it's actually more important that they feel seen. Welcome, you're in Zoom, here we are, and you wanna be able to see everybody. There's probably more than just me on the call with you. You might have somewhere between four and 40 to 400 people on a Zoom call and you wanna see everyone. So as promised, here's the 60 second uh, tech tutorial way to do that. So when you're on Zoom, in near the stop video button, there's this little setting and that, or that little arrow. And that under that little arrow, you can open up video settings. And when you do that, you get all these options. And right here, you can display up to 49 participants per screen in gallery view. Now this is a little bit of a trick because if you have 50 people on the call, there's gonna be one person that you can't see. And I found that if, depending on what screen size, even if you have that button checked, it still isn't actually gonna pack 49 people in there. So just as an FYI, and as you think about planning your group sizes, for me, a, a, a virtual meeting tip is to cap your meetings at under 49 people if you definitely wanna see people on one screen. If you go above that, little arrows will show up on the side of your screen here and here as pages, and you can scroll through pages of people on gallery view. Now, one other thing that if you're in a larger meeting that I really like to um, turn on is hide non-video participants. I was recently facilitating a workshop for the University of California, San Diego, and there were 175 people on Zoom. And so realistically, in 90 minutes, I'm not going to be seeing individually every single person. And so I'd rather, for the group engagement's sake, I'd rather just focus in on a handful of people on one screen. And so knowing that in every call, you're gonna have some people who are on video, some people who are not on video, um, just checking this to hide all non-video participants is sometimes a really nice way to give you a cleaner view so that you're not staring at black boxes with names in them, but you're only really able to connect with people. So there you go, that's the setting. Unfortunately, you can't see more than that. Um, I hope that is useful. And if you are choosing to stick around, I'm gonna unpack two virtual meeting best practices to uh, uh, increase engagement and allow your participants to feel seen, which I would argue is actually more important than you seeing them. It's more important that they feel seen, heard, and understood. In fact, I would actually argue that even if you're connected on a call, that real connection only happens when people are seen, heard, and understood for who they are and who they are not. And so two best practices to help people see. The first one is name calling. We used to learn not to call people names, but when you're facilitating virtually, I invite you to name call. And what I mean by that is call out people's actual names. So we have a gift on Zoom. We can see, and in most video platforms, we can actually see people's names right there. And due to the cocktail party effect, if you're familiar with this psychological phenomenon, right? It's the idea that when you're at a party with a whole bunch of other people, that if you hear your name, whew, your head whips around and it's almost like your brain is just subtly listening through all of the chatter until somebody says your name. And so names are like an on switch for engagement. When we hear a name, right, we turn up. It's a similar effect to like, you know, when you were in class and you were goofing off, and, or at least I guess this was my experience in class, goofing off and the teacher would walk up and kind of stand next to me, right? It was like this attention getter. Or if the teacher were to call out someone's name, now, I don't use it as a way to call out people or pick on people, but just to be able to acknowledge, you know, when you come back from a breakout session in Zoom, to be able to say, Sarah, I love the background that you have there. Where did that art come from, right? To actually be uh, curious and just notice and see and acknowledge those people 
by also using their name. So that's the first technique, name calling. The second technique to help people feel seen over video is I invite people to think of the camera or the little round bubble that you can see people through as uh, the friend of your best friend. So I call this the friend of your best friend technique. And the idea is that, you know, if you were hanging out with your best friend, you'd be totally tuned into them, just staring right at the camera. And to be honest, when you're on Zoom or you're facilitating, that's a little creepy to just be totally zoomed in. And so I invite people to think of the camera as the friend of your best friend. So think about if you were hanging out with your best friend, you might be glued into them, and every once in a while, you're gonna make eye contact with the friend of your best friend because you want them to feel included. And so that's the way I want you to think about your uh, etiquette, I guess, with camera. Like, if you wanna see everybody in gallery view, awesome, like look down, pay attention to those nonverbals, have people raising their hands, giving a thumbs up in Zoom, right? see that engagement. It's really important to invite that nonverbal feedback, especially when everybody's on mute. And every once in a while, make sure to look right into your camera so that people feel seen, especially if you're gonna call out somebody's name, say their name and look right into the camera. And it's amazing how um, that eye contact can translate through the screen so much more than if you're kind of the whole time presenting down here, looking in gallery view, wondering if people are liking this or if they're sleeping or if they're disengaged or if they're engaged, whatever. Cool. Those are two virtual meeting best practices. There are tons more in the link below, www.weand.me slash free. Even though I get to do this work for some of the smartest organizations and people and universities on the planet, I get to help them make virtual connection and engagement easy. I also believe that information should be free. And so that's why I put a whole ton of effort and time and money into creating these videos is so that you can ruthlessly steal and adapt these ideas to make your own virtual meetings and experiences better for people because, oh my goodness, the world does not need more virtual meetings where people are falling asleep, disengaged, and disenchanted, and burnt out. Have an awesome day. Thanks for listening.